Um, when the couple um, uh, approach us with a delay in their fertility, there are three main assessments that we always follow. One of them is assessing the sperm number and the quality by semen analysis. It's usually performed two to three days of absenteeism, but not longer than five days. And the important parameters that we are checking are the number of sperms per milliliter, hence the concentration, how good the sperms are moving, that's the motility of the sperm, and how good they are formed, that's the morphology of the sperm. This reflects the number and the functional quality of the sperm. In addition to that, we also check the volume of the semen and the acidity of it. It's also important to give us information whether there might be an obstruction of the sperm um, uh, delivery uh, or not. Also, there are other parameters of the extensive semen analysis, such as anti-sperm antibodies. Although the numbers, motility and morphology may be perfectly normal, anti-sperm antibodies may inactivate the sperm function. This is not a routine assessment in all units, but we particularly look into that and fine-tune our treatment if they are positive or not. Also, uh, presence of white blood cell counts can give us some clues if there's any uh, silent infection that can affect the fertilization ability of the normally formed sperm. So semen analysis is the first and very important assessment of the couple fertility. The other aspects of use of the female counterpart, which is the ovarian reserve, that's the number and the quality of the eggs available in the ovaries. Um, we also employ a very extensive test to understand the um, uh, egg quality and the number. Start with an ultrasound scan, usually performed on day two, day three, or latest by day four of the menstrual cycle. In this assessment, we count the number of small follicles. Follicles are the egg-containing small lacunes in the ovaries. It has a very good correlation with the total number of eggs that we cannot see. If we have, for example, in total, eight or ten follicles in the ovary, it gives us a quite reassurance that the egg numbers are average or above average. In addition to the ultrasonographic assessment of the ovaries in terms of the ovarian reserve assessment, we also do blood tests for hormonal assessment of the same concept. These are FSH, AMH antimalarian hormone and oestrogen tests. Traditionally, we have been only doing follicle stimulating hormone FSH assessment, but it was realized that it is actually a delay responder of the ovarian reserve changes. So a normal level cannot give us a full reassurance that the ovarian reserve is normal, hence may lead us to the wrong treatment options there. So we further detail this by checking the antimalarian hormone, which is a hormone directly coming from the ovaries, with a better correlation with the number of eggs available for treatment if we choose stimulation, for example. And estradiol level is also quite important in, the con in this context of ovarian assessment, make sure that these hormonal tests are reliable. After the assessment of the sperm and the egg quality, the third point is to assess the fallopian tubes and the uterus, and the uh, female reproductive organs. The assessment is traditionally done by an X-ray called hysterosalpingography. That's the giving an X-ray contrast material into the uterus and see that the material follows the tube and spill inside of the abdomen and the X-ray can show that process. It is relatively invasive. Um, and it may not always give the best information in terms of the uterine cavity. It may be quite reliable in terms of the fallopian tubes, but we also would like to assess that there is no irregularities in the cavity of the uterus, such as fibroid, polyps, or adhesions, or scarring that can interfere with the implantation of the embryo. Hence, we do an ultrasonographic version of this without the X-ray radiation exposure called three-dimensional hycosia assessment. In this test, we use ultrasonography, and the uterine cavity is filled with a spatial ultrasonographic media. Uh, it's saline-based, and it will fill the cavity of the uterus. It expands the cavity, hence we can create a contrast that we can see the polyp and fibroids, which can easily be missed either by X-ray version or even with the normal ultrasonography. And the assessment of the cavity of the uterus is something that we would like to do in almost every patient coming to the unit for fertility treatment, and it's maybe one of the factors that differentiate this unit's success rate from the other units. And this saline solution, after filling the cavity of the uterus, fill the fallopian tubes and spill into the abdominal cavity, and ultrasonography without radiation exposure can check that it's happening. And if the test result is normal, that's very reliable and doesn't need to be checked by further assessments then. So these are the three assessment parameters when the couple first expose 
uh, uh, come to the unit with the fertility delay, assessment of the tube and uterus, assessment of the sperm and assessment of the ovaries.